Congratulations, DJ. By the way. Cheers, hey. boys. Yeah, hey, thank you, bro. Buddy, how are you doing? Good. Oh, God, I haven't even looked at this yet. Tomorrow's going to be so fun. Hey, two family. This is a lifetime commitment, and uh, I'm excited to start my life with, with my fiance. Ready if you're hungry. It's a lot packed into a short time frame from a UFC champion to being married as well, all in within a month. It's perfect and I couldn't have planned it better if I tried. Tomorrow's the day, you know, it's the, the fight of, of your life instead of uh, just for the weekend. a very lucky situation with my dad owning his own construction company and my brother being a carpenter. Anything needs to be fixed on my house, they're, you know, hour and a half away, they come down and help me out. Let's get this one up and yeah. the screws are set, let's pick this one up. When TJ bought this house in Sacramento, he decided first thing when you buy a house, you have to make it your house. They got the bright idea to dig this basement out underneath his house. And here what we're gonna do, is we're gonna drop the ceiling for this plumbing, go back up, then this is where your shower door will go in. Sweet. You know, my dad has been the hardest worker I've ever known. Growing up as a kid, working on the job site with him on his construction company. One time when you were probably about, I don't know, do you remember all being on the roof, nailing off our one house that we were building in Greenheart? Yeah, I gotta be like, I'd be like 10 years old. I had all the kids on the roof and everybody was nailing off the roof and the neighbors came out and took pictures. They thought it was pretty cool. Mom sat on the ground and go, they got cheap labor, it was free. Yeah, we taught them how to work when they were young. That's why TJ is what he is. It's because how dedicated of a person he is. And he did learn that from his dad. He learned the work ethic that if you want to be great, you got to work for it. I'm let TJ do all the work. It's his place. Yeah. The house will fall down if I do all the work. Angel's Camp's about an hour and a half east of Sacramento. It's grown quite a bit since I've lived there. I mean, quite a bit's not like a, a lot of population, but you know, we've added a couple stoplights. We just got a McDonald's. You know, it's a really, really small town. Growing up in Angel's Camp, uh, you learn to be an outdoorsman. You know, you do a lot of camping, you do a lot of four wheeling. You know, the good redneck stuff. Skills. You got skills, dude. Last time I shot was when I killed the, the buck. Me too. And that was in Mine was bigger than yours. A lot bigger. I know I talked about it. I was pissed. <laughs> Growing up, everything was competitive. Everything is who's going to win. That's what matters the most. No matter what we did, we were competing to do it. My dad turned everything into competition. We'll be on vacation for hiking up a hill, the first one to get there. Pulls oh, that. I helped him out. He likes pressure. I only, I only do good under pressure. If my mom and dad are both driving home, whoever gets there is winning, you know I mean? It was all about the competition, who got the brag when they got home was winning. Ooh, bullseye. Ooh. Someone's been practicing. Closer. Do the Robin Hood and blow in his ear, Dad. Why I'm blowing his ear. Come on. <laughs> I'll give him one of these up. Yes! Oh, that's yes! It. Yes, it worked. We, we both got two in the bullseyes, but his, his grouping's a little bit tighter than mine, I think. I don't know who we give him that one to. We'll, we'll, we'll call it a draw. For my family, you know, it's not a big surprise. We're not really big athletes, you know, so we had to find the sport that worked best for us. By the time I think he was seven or eight, we decided to um, start participating in the youth wrestling. 
memories, huh? Good old hot box. Yeah, 95, 100 degrees, at least at the end of practice. My dad was a wrestler when he grew up, and I just caught onto it so quick. Good old Bob. I've wrestled with Bob so many times. Right. Bob, one of my best training partners. Other than me. <laughs> yeah, but Bob didn't move his leg out of the way when I shoot those singles. Yeah, you, that Bob wouldn't piss you off. <laughs> yeah, he, he, was easier, you. he was easier for me to uh, yeah. try to get a takedown on than you. My dad was my wrestling coach from when I was eight years old through high school. There was never anybody besides Hal really to push TJ in the wrestling room. He was always the guy that everyone was striving to be like. And then the next photo is here also my uh, senior year, taking second on the podium. When I ended up placing at state my junior year, I placed fifth. The only other person to place at state for my high school was my father. Out of all of the kids that came in and wrestled, me and you are still the only ones that place at state coming out of this high school. We have a little wall of fame at Bret Hart. It's a cool feeling. Part of the dedication my dad instilled in me, my parents would wake me up at six in the morning, you know, to, for me to go run to school. He had his route where he ran and people would see him and then they'd say, that was awesome, we saw your son out running his route, you know, kind of like Rocky used to do. The fact that I competed thousands and thousands of times, it's just taught me how to deal with the stress and the nerves of competition. TJ's hard work led to success, and success leads to opportunity. Colleges started coming to me, asking me to wrestle at their school, and they would pay for me to go to school. You know, I thought that was such a cool opportunity that I couldn't pass it up. So yeah, I went on a Fulbright scholarship to Cal State Fullerton and uh, wrestled there for five years. So one of our favorite stories, or should I say, TJ's favorite story. Junior year in, high, in college? Somewhere around there. I don't know. I was in college. He was home for, I don't know if it was a holiday or summer, and all of a sudden I hear TJ going, Mom! Mom! Get the camera! I'm like, what? And I run out here and I see him with his dad's flat on his back and TJ's pinning him. I'm like, okay, let me go get it. So I needed some proof, you know, so I had to yell for my mom to go run and well, get the camera. And if we didn't have it on film, he, he would have said, if You don't have a picture of it, it never happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? Exactly. You know, he's always been able to beat me all my life, and then to, to come home and pin my dad was a, a big win for me. It was almost like becoming a, an All-American or winning nationals, you know, pinning my dad. All right, guys, bring it in, guys, bring it in. Bring it in. Mark Munoz, great wrestler, NCAA champion for uh, Oklahoma State. He's from California, moved back home and started coaching at UC Davis, he was an assistant coach there. As he was an assistant coach there, so was Uriah Faber. I had known who Mark was because he was a stud wrestler and he ended up coaching on the same staff as I was at UC Davis. He just graduated from college and he was dabbling in some things as far as just making ends meet and then he found this sport called mixed martial arts. Uriah became the marquee guy. He became the face of the WEC. I've always enjoyed being kind of a leader, and I see talent in guys. Good job, baby. Good job. He wanted to make a team. And he wanted his gym to be able to lead a pack in mixed martial arts. I convinced Mark Munoz to get in the sport. Fighting out of Sacramento! Chad Mendes, Joseph Benavidez. This definitely wouldn't be possible without Faber. Oh, Uriah, I owe it all to him. And sure enough, the name became Alpha Male. How many of these Alpha Male guys have that crushing guillotine? So after I trained with uh, Uriah at Team Alpha Male, I had to make a decision, a very hard decision, and leave Team Alpha Male and be able to train down south. 
Mark's wife wanted to move back home. Home for her was Orange County, and he just continued to coach wrestling, and the program down there was Cal State Fullerton. And that's where he stepped in as assistant coach and, and met up with TJ. When I met TJ Dillashaw, when I saw him wrestle, he was yelling at guys on a map, just very intense. TJ was basically uppercutting and kneeing his partners. <laughs> and I said, TJ, this is not an MMA match. He was destined to fight. I told Uriah, I said, hey, I have a guy down here that that is going to be good for your camp. TJ and I start talking. I start telling him about what we got going on. And he was all pumped. I offered him to come down and check it out. Him being a superstar and how nice he was to invite me up to Sacramento and to live in one of his houses, yeah. you know, that's uh, pretty cool. See that? I think I sold them on it. One, two, three, West Coast! Good job, guys. Good job. I've known my wife, Rebecca, pretty much my entire life. We went to the same grammar school, same high school, you know, just always been around each other. You want to try stacking one? Oh, you can I'm stack my own. I can put all the good stuff on there. Yeah. Skip all the zucchini. When he called and said, you know, he'd met Uriah, just the way TJ is, he's very like, let's go, let's do it. He doesn't hesitate. He said, I think I should move to Sacramento. They just didn't reach what I wanted to, you know, and High school, my goal was to be a state champion. I ended up taking second. Same with Cal State Fullerton, my goal was to be a national champion, and I always missed out. I think this was also helped with me pushing in my career for the UFC and, and MMA is that I always wanted to be the best. I think I had mixed emotions. I had just signed, you know, my first, like, real job. And I'm like, what do you mean? We have a lease here. <laughs> like, what do you mean you're getting up and moving to Sacramento? But I also wasn't sure the combination of no more wrestling and then this very typical job, how that was really going to satisfy him. I had to give it a shot. Here we are on the block. This is the first house that TJ lived in on the block. He lived in a couple. When Uriah got involved in MMA, it was so new. You know, not very many people knew about it, and he needed workout partners. And uh, he's just a doer. He knew that he needed to get a house and move his training partners into it. As I started to make more money, I bought the house next door, moved a bunch of guys into that house, and then ended up buying the house right over there. TJ moved in, what, 2009? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a funny story. I, I moved up to uh, get into a room, just packed all my stuff in a truck from uh, Southern California, and uh, had no idea that my assistant wrestling coach from Cal State Fullerton moved up on the exact same day, but just got here hours before me and stole the room I was going to move into. <laughs> <laughs> so here it is, the main living room here, and this is TJ's palace. <laughs> I had my futon here, all my stuff stuffed underneath it, and uh, TV on the wall. Guys would come in in the morning, hang out, and I'd just be sleeping on the couch. <laughs> and you could just hang out with me if you wanted to, or just be in the living room. And beautiful view of the pool. Yeah, I can also see Master Tom taking a shower in the hose <laughs> out back. Instead of using the shower inside, he would just shower in the hose. And, and skinny frog legs. Skin, skinny frog legs. <laughs> you know, to some, my situation in the living room wouldn't look ideal, but I had my mind set, and so I was stoked on the situation. The Saw the awesome pool in the backyard, and just got to hang out with cool dudes. It was awesome. When TJ first got here, I mean, first of all, TJ is the most competitive person I've ever met in my entire life. My very first practice at Team Alpha Mill was sparring. All right, Ray. We're always ready. Usually, a guy on their first day isn't going to want to spar with me, your favorite or Chad. Offensive, but stay under control. Let's go. Nice, TJ. Do it again. Even when he went in with minimal training and he was fighting world title contenders, he thought he could beat us up. I didn't have any technique. I just went off of what I thought I should be doing. The first time TJ comes in, he's like all pumped up to spar, just swinging for the fences trying to kill, but you know, getting caught, and he gets a little bloody nose, he gets rocked once or twice, and he's like, come on, he's screaming <laughs> at God, like, come on, is that all you got? 
It was tough. I remember my jaw just being so sore for weeks, you know, not being able to chew gum or eat very well because you got beat up too much. And now, as you see, now he's like a calculated killer. Gets punched, pissed off, but he's stalking you, so. It's been a, it's been a great progression. It took a little while. <laughs> it was only a matter of time before, you know, he was turning the tables and, and starting getting the better of us. We have a legacy that we're trying to build a team alpha male. So we have, you know, guys that are below us that are they're still up and coming that, you know, we're pushing to be the best. When TJ was first, you know, coming up, we all knew how good TJ was. There's a lot of other benefits to being part of a, a great team and folks that have influence. You know, you can shotgun someone into the public eye. With the Ultimate Fighter, I think it was the first season that they had done a lightweight competition, like 35s. I don't like to get myself nervous if this guy's good, if that guy's good. I know I'm good and I'm gonna bring it. We were all pushing for him to get on the Ultimate Fighter. You know, it's just basically an accelerated way to get your road started and, you know, that's exactly what TJ did. That was good too. <laughs> He's out. He's out. The Ultimate Fighter. Next fighter for Team Bispin, TJ Dillashaw. Welcome to the team. The Ultimate Fighter went great for me. While I was on the house, I was super confident. TJ is probably the most complete mixed martial artist on the show. Um, he's got great takedowns. He's the whole package, you know. Once I was there, I kind of realized that I was leaps ahead of these guys. That the things I was doing with my team proved to be better because I could I could just tell. What's the hand? <laughs> I think it was a great experience for him just to be in that house and to see all the competition. He knew how to be, you know, on the road. He knows how to live with a bunch of guys. He knows how to train hard. He was tailor-made for that kind of situation, and he excelled in it. Moving on to the finale, T.J. Dillashaw. Being in the finale is not the end of it for me. Uh, I'm there to win it, and I'm there to go on further than that. I want that belt. This fight will decide who will be the Ultimate Fighter Season 14 Bantamweight winner. John Dodson against T.J. Dillashaw. I was going into the fight a 3-1 to one favorite. Everyone was picking me to win the fight. was devastated by it. Once again, just kind of like high school and college, I just come up a little bit short. Everybody wants their child to have the most success, but sometimes losing makes you a better competitor than winning. And as soon as it happened, I uh, told my managers to tell the UFC that if they're gonna give me a shot in the UFC, that uh, I wanna fight instantly. I wanna prove that that wasn't the TJ Dillashaw that everyone needs to see in the cage. He ended up not winning the Ultimate Fighter, but um, that just made him more motivated. Beautiful transition, TJ Dillashaw is just completely dominating. Really have to admire the transitions, Kenny, of TJ Dillashaw from one dominant position to the next. This is a very, very talented individual. And what an evolution since his time on season 14 of the Ultimate Fighter. But Dillashaw just a different level, man. There's no other way to explain it. You see this guy fight, good looking, athletic, aggressive. You know, he's getting the finishes, he's beating the people he's supposed to beat. But we still, all of us as a team, we're still growing. You know, we, we didn't have a head coach at that time. You know, it's tough to be a uh, world class fighter without a coach. I wanted somebody that was primarily a striking-based guy that had experience in mixed martial arts. 
I remember your guy telling me, he's like, oh, I think I'm gonna try to bring out Dwayne Ludwig and see how he's gonna work out. Dwayne got involved in kickboxing at a young age, you know, has been an incredible kickboxer his, his whole life and got into the UFC. Are you ready? Let's go! You know, unfortunately, things just never worked out for him. Time out! Time out! What's that, bro? It's broken. It's broken ankle. Oh, how unfortunate for Dwayne Ludwig. He was injured too much, and you know, he finally had to retire from the sport. Run, run. To get the call from Team Alpha Male to be the head trainer for them, I mean, that right there is an honor in itself to work with such high-level athletes. It was a, an immediate no-brainer. TJ is a kind of an obsessive guy. Dwayne is all about business. Me and Dwayne clicked instantly. You know, it's been a progression for TJ, but his has just been faster than any progression I've ever really seen. That's because of Dwayne Ludwig. TJ and I have a, in a way, I guess we have a little bit of a closer connection than most of the other guys on the team. We think a lot alike. We have good chemistry, that's for sure. So let me see uh, what else we got, though. Banana hemp, well, yeah, there could just be that, huh? Banana hemp for us. Oh, yeah. So, do you have any kale in there still? Kale and chocolate. Is chocolate part of the uh, Dwayne Bing diet? <laughs> He's thinking about my fight all the time. You know, I'll get texts in the middle of the night of combos he thinks I should do on my next fight. You couldn't ask for any more with a head coach. That's Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> and it's good too. Mm. I want to win for myself very badly, but I want to win just as bad for Dwayne. Dinner has been served. You see the new head coach, Bang Ludwig, walking out with T.J. Dillashaw. Well, there's it. After that, I just went on a kickboxing terror. Neither fighter has been taken down in his UFC career. Both of these men are just dangerous everywhere. Judges won the contest. 29-28, Dillashaw. 29-28, Asun Sal. And 29-28, for the winner by split decision, Javier Asun Sal! You know, I was very mad about the way it went down. I feel like I won the fight um, and got robbed. After the uh, Asun Sao fight, I hadn't seen TJ in the gym for a while. I texted TJ and I said, hey man, how you doing? How you holding up? Because I know he takes things really hard. He said, I'm fine. I just, anytime I see any fighting, I just get pissed off. And I just said, hey brother, you're going to be a world champion someday. You have another 10 years at least in this sport, you can't start having a negative feeling. You gotta love it. The Asunsa fight was just another lesson for him, you know. That's what all champions do. You fell, you come back stronger. Yeah, the Easton fight was a good example of what's to come. It was great to see TJ really come out of his shell and get into his comfort zone. The TJ that we saw in practice, we saw that against Easton. Dillashaw moving forward with a combination. Very very fast. Very loose, controlled, in there having fun. And I think that's the best TJ. Dillashaw just never stops, man. I was having so much fun. I remember talking to Shaquille O'Neal. He was sitting in front row and uh, I hit a double leg and told me it was for him. Instead of blocking out the audience and what's going on around me, I decided to uh, have fun and absorb everything that's going on. Man, so many tricks. 
that repertoire of TJ Hawks. It's definitely what I need to continue to keep doing because it, it's uh, made me a whole lot better of a fighter. What a performance to TJ Tosha. I had an awesome fight against Mike Easton, performed really well. I won five of my last six fights, should have been six. So I got the call, I was scheduled to fight the game in Muzagaki, May 24th. It was about 12 weeks out and uh, about four weeks later, I got a phone call saying that my fight has changed due to my opponent. My opponent has changed. TJ and I, we just got done finishing a personal lesson and it happened on the day that news broke that I will be going back to Colorado. He has to move his family back home. You know, he's got three kids, a beautiful wife, and uh, just wants to get them back closer to their family and start his own academy. Me and Dwayne were actually at the gym right after practice talking about how his last day was going to be my fight. And, uh, you know, it's a good way to end it is because me and him are really close, except for the fact that he hadn't got a title in the gym. And he got the call like 15 minutes after that. He is the elite of the elite at 135. That kid is dangerous. Hannah Burrell, the dominant champion, is meeting TJ Dillashaw. Unexpected contender. I just think Cannon Barrow is just on a totally different level, and I'm just curious as a fight fan to see what kind of gap there is. We were debating the pound for pound, and I just think that's Hannah Barrow right now. Hannah Barrow's been undefeated for nine years. I'd only been fighting for four. I'm not really hearing anybody kicking TJ Dillashaw. It's a little bit too much too soon, but I don't think it's screwing over by any stretch. I was an eight to one underdog. No one expected me to win. It was unheard of that I was going to beat this guy. Five and one. People were baffled at how confident I was going into the fight. But I said, if you don't believe, what's the point of, of stepping in that cage? TJ was very loose, he's very confident, you know, going into this fight. I remember going to my Easton fight thinking, man, I want to get on one of these posters. How bad do you want it? You know, and then my next fight, I'm headlining the title fight. We roll it! He was so in the moment and present and just having fun that whole week that it was totally a recipe for success. TJ was at weigh-ins, loose, happy as ever. You know, not like he was about to fight this monster, this legend, this like mythical beast. He was just happy. TJ was a big underdog, but we've all had to deal with this guy for years. Just know what he's made of. The confidence was there from us. We all kind of knew TJ was gonna be the champion. Morale streak leading up to that moment. I mean, that's impressive just for any sport but it's beatable if you think differently and we think differently
When I got in the cage, I heard a lot of Brazilian fans chanting, Hu vamo he, you know, saying, you're going to die. TJ went out there. When he touched gloves with him, he was like, come on, let's do this. I was like, he's feeling so good and so comfortable. He's ready for this. Oh, contact? Yeah! This is very calm and relaxed out there for a guy who's fighting one of the best pound-for-pound fighters on Earth. And extremely fluid. TJ goes out there right off the bat, just starts tagging him up, looking great. He looks to be at a different speed than headed around thus far in the fight. He looks fantastic. This is without a doubt the best TJ Dillashaw show we've ever seen. super emotional just like sweat in my armpits we're all sweaty and um, you know we're all grabbing each other shaking each other you know he's gonna do it this is awesome Say so. I knew we were on. I knew we were on once the first round ended. I don't want to throw punches with him right now. He's moving too much. When they showed both the boys in their corner and we were looking up at the big screen, it was like that moment was a turning point for both fighters. How much damage did that punch do? With the performance I was putting out, people were just in awe of what was happening in front of them. I'm saying, hands up, TJ, hands up. Oh, good combination by Lieutenant Morale. We don't want to be this close to our dream and, and not achieve it. Masterful job by TJ Dillashaw. I was like, is this like a crazy dream? Like, what's going on? He's gonna do it. He's gonna do it. And every round, he just keep getting better. Head kick! Oh, TJ Dillashaw is dominating a guy who everybody thought is the best pound for pound fighter on the planet. This is amazing. Take this head off his shoulders. Yeah. Come on. Take the seat. He's lying on every stage, baby. This is technique. It's not just wailing on him or brawling. TJ looks like a world-class kickboxer here. I remember him setting up a spinning back kick and I like smile at him and say, oh, you're gonna throw a spinning back kick right now, you know? <laughs> then instantly when I said that, the first thing that came to my head is like, he doesn't speak English. Dillashaw's explosiveness is the difference in this fight thus Well, far. his movement, attack at angles that Penny doesn't see coming. <laughs> The fifth round is the first time I seen Dwayne smile. He got into the corner, just knew we had the fight won, and he had a smile on his face and was finally relaxed. Thank you. Push to a punch. Thank you. Give him a seminar for me. Cool. We're not even going to charge him. Cool. DJ Dillashaw, five minutes away from bringing a UFC belt home to Uriah's gym, Team Alpha Male. He's battered, his right eye is almost closed, and he's been dominated for four rounds for the first time in his career. What I was doing was, was working for me. I didn't want to change it. You know, I didn't want to coast, so I just continued to do it. I saw an opening and I took it. Here's a kick again. No! A stiff punch to the face of Morale.
the best examples I have ever seen in all my years of watching mixed martial arts. Tonight, we saw TJ Dillashaw reach his full potential. An amazing performance. the most impressive performance, the most unexpected performance I've ever seen. See somebody that you've had a hand in their success and to see them living, really, really living out their dream is, is a pretty special time for me. I couldn't write a better story myself. I did everything I wanted to do perfectly in some. The morning after the fight in our hotel room, I hear the newspaper dropped in front of the front door. As surreal as it all felt, and as much of a dream it all felt like, that was proof that that really just happened. Dillashaw wins by TKO. In New the UFC bantamweight champion. First championship in the UFC for a Sacramento fighter. TJ, you're holding what so many people vie for and want. What's it feel like? It's amazing. It's heavy, but it's amazing. <laughs> what does that photo mean to you? Yeah, I lost my voice from yelling. And I asked the Senate to join me in recognizing TJ. Congratulations. I just kind of set my goals to be the UFC champion in the world. You know, I set the highest goal possible when I got involved in the sport and I was going to be the champ. This is like, what, steel? Aluminum? I don't know what this is. 15 pounds of greatness. It's crazy how quick I got in this belt and reached the goal that I've wanted for so long. And it's only the start of my career. I remember last year going to the Fan Expo and having a line that ended in a half hour. I'm supposed to be there for an hour but now I'll go and sign at a booth for two hours. Are you going to kick my butt in some video games? <laughs> oh, he's hurt! Oh, he's hurt! I got him a little bit! Yes! Oh, man, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Turn to the right, TJ! It is a very great feeling to have everyone appreciate what you do and you know all the things you've worked very hard for. The goal is not to be famous. Does it feel good? It feels awesome. I'm in it to be the best in the world. And you know, now I've, I've reached that, that goal and I need to set new goals for myself. Here he is, your UFC bantamweight world champion, TJ Dillashaw. <laughs> going to change the person that I am. I'm going to continue to be the humble TJ Dillashaw that I've always been and uh, to feed off of this attention and you know, continue to be who I am. That's awesome. TJ and I have had this little banter going on from the first, we first started dating about how one day if things kept going the way they were going there'd be like a parade in Angels Camp and I would tease him about it and that's practically what happened here today. Perfect. Good? Yeah. All right. It's amazing to come out and see all the hometown come and support and people I've known forever and it's just uh, it's amazing to have my hometown behind me. I mean I hope it's a long reign. I hope he achieves everything he wants to and you know we're there to support him. The community's there to support him. So that's as good as it gets. Best of luck, kiddo. You know? Thank you. Keep going, you're a great kid. I appreciate that. Thank you. Congratulations, son. Thank you.
Appreciate it. How much longer? Well, that's like 4 o'clock. 4 13. The last few months have been crazy with all these amazing things going on. TJ won the, the world championship. We've been planning the wedding. This is literally just the beginning of TJ's career and then his life with Rebecca for sure. And this is fun for me to be a part of so many special moments in their lives. And this is just the beginning. I mean, TJ, TJ is going to be a superstar in mixed martial arts. Does that feel okay? I think so. Do you guys think that looks good? Yeah. There's no reason for me to be nervous for this. I mean, I've been with the girl for so long now. I know she's the right one, so there's no reason to be nervous to, to start a great life, you know? Cheers, guys. Cheers. Mm. The whole build-up, regardless of whether he wins the belt or not, we're coming here. This this was a plan months ago. And so when he wins a belt, it's a big deal. On behalf of TJ and Rebecca, I would like to welcome you to witness their marriage. Rebecca, with this ring I marry you, is a symbol of our never-ending love and devotion. I promise to be true to you always, as I commit my life to you forever. Ladies and gentlemen, by the power vested in me, I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss the bride. <laughs> You know, even though I've done all the really important things in my life all at once, you know, it, I'm excited to see what the future's going to bring for me. And, uh, you know, not only in my career, but in my relationship. And uh, it's awesome.